We normally think of the desert as having the most venomous snakes. Huge, charismatic rattlesnakes in that classic threat pose, ready to unleash a deadly strike. But thousands of miles east, in the lush forests of Florida, is a secretive, brightly banded snake with a toxic secret. The Eastern Coral Snake. Not only is this snake one of America's most venomous, but later in this video, you'll see why its unique bite might be the most dangerous in the country. What we have right here is a gorgeous Eastern Coral Snake. One of my favorite reptiles in all of North America. One of the reasons why is that amazing bright coloration. Coral snakes are really hard to miss. These snakes almost look fake. Across the world, coral snakes have some of the most vibrant patterns of any snake, but why? Snake patterning can actually tell us a bit about their biology. Many snakes have bright colors, like that of the rough green snake. Vibrant yellow-green, these snakes hang out in the branches of trees, where they look cunningly like vines. For the green snake, the bright coloration is a disguise, but the coral snake sticks out like a sore thumb in its habitats. Other venomous snakes don't do this. Many of the terrestrial vipers have intricate patterns like that of the rattlesnake. The diamond and chevron patterns we see running down their backs aren't a fashion statement. It may look jarring when these snakes are out in the open, but in the shade of the plants where they lie in ambush, it obscures their outline from prey, helping them to disappear into the background. The vipers of the U.S. are ambush hunters, stocky, powerful snakes that sit and wait for hours, even days, on mammal trails, and use lightning-fast strikes to end their kills. They need to stay hidden, so they need built-in camouflage. The coral snake doesn't sit and wait for its food. It's a real go-getter burrowing through the sandy soils of the coastal habitat it calls home, actively hunting its prey. So its color serves an entirely different purpose. The coral snake wants to be seen. That bright, vibrant color is not only startling, but it serves as a warning because the coral snake is one of the most venomous snakes in the entire US and its bite is absolutely lethal. A study back in 2001 actually used fake snakes across parts of the US to see how predators responded to them. Snakes are on the menu for lots of different things. So being brightly colored can come at a huge disadvantage if you stick right out of the environment. In parts of the US where coral snakes are present, these fake bright colored snakes were left alone. But outside of the coral snake's range, predators were more likely to investigate and even try to eat these fake snakes. On a snake as venomous as the coral snake, who doesn't need camouflage to hide, these bright colors actually are super useful. It's built-in natural selection. The predators that mess with it get bit, and they die. A few generations down the line, their would-be predators have an evolved caution around brightly colored snakes, and many harmless species have taken advantage of it. So with deadly coral snakes and harmless mimics overlapping throughout their range, how do we know if we're looking at a dangerous species? A lot of people will often say that you can use a rhyme to identify them. They'll say something like, red on yellow, kill a fellow, red and black, venom lack. But that's actually a really, really unhelpful rhyme in most of the world. It's only useful in the Southeast US, and even then, you can see right here, look, there's, there's black sections inside his red banding. He's in shed. These colors are not very, very bright. So you might see this and think, oh, you know, he's not that bright colored. Maybe he's not dangerous. And you might actually get a very, very serious bite. What I actually do to identify coral snakes, you can look at the face here. Rounded cheeks where that yellow band comes right by the eyes, but the biggest difference, that face is unlike any of their mimics that are out here. I mean, there, there are milk snakes and stuff that have the black nose. The black nose is not a good ID tip. The bright coloring is not great because scarlet king snakes and stuff get just as bright, sometimes even brighter. But that dented in nose, they use it as a shovel, but it also has that same structure of the family of snakes that this guy belongs to. Unlike all other venomous snakes in the US, this is not a viper. This is an elapid. And the elapids are a very special family typically found out in Asia and Australia, and they are known for having a very powerful neurotoxic venom. A surprising number of snakes have venom. All of the family Viperidae, or the vipers, have venom. Almost all of the elapids have venom, even if some aren't dangerous to humans. Even many of the common colubrids have venom, more than you'd think, and it's entirely for subduing their prey. Just think about it. Snakes are effectively just a tube of flesh, and since all snakes are carnivores, this presents a bit of a problem. Without powerful claws to kill your food, which is often bigger than your head, how do you prevent your food from fighting back and killing you? For most snakes, venom serves to help immobilize their food. Things like garter snakes and hognose snakes are more or less just making their prey sluggish and numb as it goes down, and the smothering forces of their digestive tract finish the job. 
the more common vipers in the US have taken it a step further. They have a hemotoxic venom, a venom that destroys blood cells and tissue alike, which not only kills their food, but helps to speed up the digestive process before they even eat it. And then there are the elapids, of which very few exist in the Americas at all, which primarily have neurotoxic venoms. Since these toxins spread quickly through the body and go systemic, they're often more potent and faster at killing prey than the hemotoxins. And practically all of the world's most venomous snakes have some form of neurotoxin. There is a desert coral snake in the US, but specifically the eastern coral snake found in the temperate and subtropical southeast has the third most potent venom of all American reptiles by weight. Coral snakes are snake hunters. They're primarily eating reptiles. Reptiles don't have the same sort of metabolism that mammals do. So in order to kill them, you need an entirely different venom. The coral snake's venom is what we call a presynaptic neurotoxin. It basically interferes with nerves' ability to send signals, effectively turning its prey's nervous system off like a light switch. As that venom spreads throughout its victim's body, it continues shutting down these signaling pathways, almost like you're walking through a house going room by room, turning out the lights. The only difference here is you're not saving on electricity, you're just dying. And the coral snake really isn't actively foraging above ground either. They pretty much only appear on the surface after heavy rains. They're living underneath leaf litter in that top layer of soil, hunting for other subterranean reptiles under cover of darkness. And because these things are rarely seen by people at all, there's a lot of misconceptions about how their bite even works. Now, another thing I hear a lot about coral snakes is they say, oh, they're rear fang. They have to really chew to bite you. But the thing is, the reason people think that is they don't have these giant hinged fangs like the vipers do. The cottonmouth's genus name is Agkistrodon, which means hooked tooth, like a fish hook tooth. The coral snakes and the elapids, they don't have those long hinged fangs like the vipers. They have these little tiny fixed fangs in the front of their mouth. In fact, some of the largest fangs that elapids can have are some of the taipans in Australia. And even then their fangs look tiny compared to like a rattlesnake or even a copperhead. You get bit by a coral snake, you don't feel pain. It didn't feel like there's huge puncture wounds or anything. It's very misleading. You might think you're totally fine, but then hours later, almost like you had a stroke, you start losing feeling in your face. You start having trouble breathing. You start losing motor function of your legs, and then you can get in really serious trouble. The thing about the coral snake is they're one of the rarest snakes in the US. Ask anybody who's into reptiles, these are a very, very coveted snake to see in the wild. But unlike things like the eastern diamondback rattlesnake who have been completely wiped out throughout their range, as far as we can tell, coral snakes are in good numbers. They just are so secretive that nobody ever sees them. And since hardly anybody sees them, hardly anybody is bitten by them. Pair that with the fact that these are shy, relatively docile snakes that are pretty reluctant to bite, and it's a pretty big deal when somebody is actually bitten by the coral snake. Because bites are so infrequent, most places don't stock antivenom for them anymore. You know, you're bitten by a rattlesnake, a copperhead, a cottonmouth. It's gonna be a horrifically painful experience, both for your body and your wallet, because antivenom is very expensive in the US. But at least we have antivenom, and you can pretty easily treat those bites. The problem with the coral snake, and what makes it such a dangerous encounter, is the fact that we really don't have antivenom for them. There are some reports that a couple of pharmaceutical companies are still making it, but I haven't been able to verify any source that claims antivenom for coral snakes exists in the United States. So when you're bitten by this snake, it's a whole different ballgame. The lucky part is it's a neurotoxin and it's not a destructive neurotoxin that's gonna cause like permanent nerve damage or anything. It just turns off your nervous system usually long enough for you to die. The cause of death from a coral snake bite is usually a respiratory failure after your diaphragm is paralyzed. But the thing is the coral snake bite is survivable if you can get onto a machine that breathes for you. As long as you're still able to circulate oxygen through your body, your liver can eventually fight off that venom and you'll survive but it is going to be an incredibly grisly ordeal. The most important thing is that coral snakes only bite as an absolute last resort defense. They're not like a rattlesnake where if you step on them, they're gonna quickly bite your ankle and their fangs are small enough that if you're wearing socks, it's likely they won't be able to puncture through. But also unlike the rattlesnakes, copperheads and cottonmouths, these guys don't have any camouflage. It's not like you're gonna step on them because you didn't see them. You will see this snake a mile away. It warns you visually with that vibrant banded pattern. With their incredible coloration though, I find them to be one of the coolest snakes on the planet. They look unreal and like nothing else on earth. Pair that with their toxic, incredible venom, and these are easily 
one of the most fascinating reptiles in the entire world. But the coral snake isn't the only rare reptile that calls some of the ancient habitats of Florida home. A snake that's arguably even rarer and even more special also lurks in the shadows of the longleaf pines. And that snake is the world's largest rattlesnake with an incredibly powerful venom as well. But this snake's story goes way deeper than the potency of its bite, and it has a secret that may be tied to biodiversity across the entire North American continent. If you want to find out more about the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.